All right, we're going to go to our movie review. Let's start out with Ma Rainey's and go to our movie critic, Rita Cinema. Ma Rainey's, a famous play. What did you make of the film, Virgin? All righty. Um, by the way, this um, movie opened in theaters in November and is available on Netflix. Uh, it was a bit debuted on Netflix on Well, December it is a 18th. Netflix film. Let's yes. See. Okay. Well, but it... It was in theaters, is what yes, I'm trying to say. Yes, but that's how it gets Oscar yeah. noms. Let's. Okay. <laughs> I. <laughs> well, we're going right. to go on my Netflix film rant uh, later on, as okay. per always. We're looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, the film is directed by George Wolfe and has a screenplay by Ruben Santiago Hudson, based on the play of the same name by August Wilson. By the way, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is the name of a song that Ma Rainey sings, and it's you know kind of one of the highlights uh, of the, the film too. She was a real jazz singer. I'm going, so. to, I'm going to say that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the play is one of a group of plays referred to as the Pittsburgh Plays. And Denzel Washington, who produced this movie, has a deal to bring eight of those plays um, to the screen. Um, Washington, of course, starred in and won an Academy Award for his role in the August Wilson play, Fences, that became a movie. Um, and I think probably I ought to be pretty transparent about the fact that I have not read August Wilson's plays. And the only one I've seen on the stage is Fences. I have not seen this particular one. Um, I did like Fences a lot, both on the stage and the movie. Um, uh, this particular movie has, I mean, it was, um, I think people were really looking forward to it because of the stars who are in it. And um, it's received outstanding reviews, actually 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and for the lead actors, Viola Davis and the late Chadwick Boseman. Um, much has been made of the fact that this was Boseman's last role and that he really put his heart and soul into it. Of course, no one at the time knew that he was dying uh, other than perhaps himself. Um, he's a front runner at this point for an Academy Award nomination. Uh, but I will say the cast definitely stands out even beyond Davis and Boseman. They're very good. Um, the uh, actors who play the members of her band all have speak, uh, pretty big speaking roles and are, are very good in the movie. And the music, I mean, it's about a, a, you know, a blues singer and there's jazz and blues and the music is by, uh, in the film is by Branford Marsalis and is excellent as well. And certainly I think adds to the film, your enjoyment of the film. Um, although I think you're going to make the point that Maybe it's not the kind of music we all like to sit around and listen to in a movie. Um, of course, the um, music is the heart of the play since this is about a musician and it stands to reason that it, you know, it would stand out. But um, uh, I, from what I understand, from what I've read, August Wilson liked to make music of an aspect of his plays, even if the story isn't about a musician or music, he likes to make it a part of his um, stage plays. Um, <clears throat> The story is based on a true life figure, Ma Rainey, who is a le legendary blues singer, and she initially rose to fame in Georgia and was eventually uh, referred to as the mother of the blues. Uh, she, in this particular movie, uh, this story, she's moved on to entertaining clubs in northern cities, um, and that's the backdrop for the uh, movie. Um, I might add that this is, takes place in the 1920s, late 20s. Um, and at this time, uh, in terms of the history of the U.S., the, this was a time of the Great Migration, where many, uh, actually thousands, even millions by the time it was done, uh, Southern Blacks, uh, Southern Black families migrated to the North to get away from the Jim Crow laws in the South and uh, of course lynching and just a, a pretty horrible life that they had there in order to try to find a better life in the North um, to get better jobs um, and uh, you know to to change uh, even though uh, you know it, it certainly wasn't uh, the best kind of life in the North for Blacks at that time either. They still had much more opportunity and it could get away from um, the dreadful life they had uh, in the South. Um, so this uh, has Ma Rainey in the North entertaining in clubs with her, her band. And the film is one day in the recording studio. Um, that's the, the uh, story of the film. We see a little bit of 
action before then where they're in a nightclub entertaining and you know we get a little bit of uh, her riding in her car to the recording studio and and get a little bit of taste of what she's like there um, <clears throat> but it's basically about the day in the recording studio which has been arranged by her manager and her pr producer both of whom her record a record producer both of whom are white of course um, they want to get this recording because they know it will sell and because she's well known and uh, will make a lot of money so they're willing to kind of tangle with this rather demanding headstrong not rather definitely demanding headstrong woman who isn't particularly easy to like <laughs> frankly even though she's very uh, talented um, but they they want this recording so they get her in there and they do what you know she wants them to do um, ma is uh joined by her band and most of the play scenes the season of the play are really uh displaying you know what i would call the frustrations and sort of entanglements among the band members with ma and among each other <clears throat> A key character in the story, of course, is the in the play is Le, uh, Levy, Levy Green, a horn player with the band. And this is the role that uh, uh, Bozeman plays, Chadwick Bozeman plays. And he is ambitious, brash, and pretty much full of himself. Uh, he, you know, thinks he's going to go places and he doesn't think it's going to be with Ma's band. Um, he also, though, as you find out, uh, you know, as the play goes wrong, along, harbors a great deal of anger from a difficult child growing up as a black person in the South. And it's not very different from many other people's stories from that time. Um, and actually from each, um, each of the black characters in the movie, the members of the band kind of tell a little of their story and you, and you find out how, you know, difficult and, and you know, uh, uh, what they have faced, um, I, I think, as part of the play. I, and I think that's what, you know, Wilson, the story that Wilson wants to tell. Anyway, Levy t tangles with the other band members. He goes head to head with Ma uh, and, you know, just has a, a, a pretty big, um, uh, I mean, he, he thinks a great deal of himself. I'm not sure they think so uh, well of him. Of him. Um, I think Bozeman is great in the role. Um, he certainly was not holding back in the least. At times, I felt like it was a bit of overacting. But to tell you the truth from some of the reviews I've read, I may be in the minority. Most reviewers thought he acted the heck out of the part. And uh, they, they um, didn't necessarily see what I, I got the feeling that got that I got from it. Um, like the character Levy, though, the actor himself knew that he was dying and that he was doomed, as was Levy, actually. And it's a tragic story, both in the movie and in real life. And I think you do feel that as you watch it. Um, um, and by the end of the story, Levy is fired from the band by Ma. He, you know, he gets into all kinds of trouble with her during the, the uh, taping or recording and um he also fails to uh, fails to sell his original music to the producer he's trying to do that although interestingly enough the producer does keep the music and uh he tells levy it's no good but then he keeps it and then basically he has a total nervous breakdown when one of the other member band members scuffs his new shoes and you know then uh, i'm not going to give away what happens after that uh I think it's an important ending to the story. This play has been around forever. I think people okay. know. <laughs> so he kills one of the other band members. <laughs> so he then is, you know, has committed murder. One of the band members is dead. Ma has fired him and moved on. And uh, basically the bottom line is they all get paid. And then the white producers go sell the record and make a lot of money. Uh, not to mention Levy's music too. So I don't know if you want to inject anything. Well, I was here. just going to... <clears throat> This one, uh, I thought they did as well as they could for the material they had. Uh, I, I thought the performances were solid. I, I thought the way the film was shot and played out was as good as you could do for a... This one just didn't seem to translate from theater yeah. to screen as well as... Uh, the first one, Fences, I, I thought Fences translated a little easier and a little smoother uh, to the screen. Uh, and, you know, it, Fences also was probably a one shot, maybe two different shot, you know, film. It was basically shot in the house. 
but I thought maybe the family intricate drama there maybe lended itself better to screen than a bunch of, you know, band members thrown together in a studio uh, doing a recording session. I mean, that just maybe doesn't have the quite same impact as it would if you were sitting in a theater with live uh, performances in front of you. Yeah. It also felt a little more produced, uh, I thought, than Fences, whereas I thought Fences flowed like a theater production did, and this one felt a little more like, okay, cut, let's shoot this scene again, cut, let's shoot this scene again, trying to get it too perfect and too uh, sort of smooth and feeling like a one-shot theater production. So I, I thought that sort of maybe uh, lower graded this uh, film for me. I, I don't want to say I hated it, but I, I did not find it as appealing uh, a, as a film. I, I, I think if I saw the theater production of this, in a playhouse or a theater. I, I think I might like it a little bit better. I think it's better. better there too. And uh, the other thing I was gonna say is also like music style wise, I feel like if you are in the theater and you feel the music and you hear the music, it, it comes out a little better than if you're watching it on, you know, on your TV at home from, you know, your Netflix right. streaming device. Yeah. I mean, no matter how good a sound system you have, it's just, I feel like that sort of jazz blues fusion it, it has a little bit better feel when you're in person and you can see it and than you can uh, coming from uh, through the screen. So I thought that was mainly where uh, it, it sort of just, it didn't make it quite for me. I, 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 I will say the performances, I, I thought Viola Davis was uh, just dynamite. Now I tend to agree with you. Uh, I did not think Chadwick Boseman's performance was bad. But uh, if we start getting into best actor um, territory here, I, I, I just didn't feel like this, you know, I, I think you probably could have given this role to a lot of different people and the thing would have played out the exact same. I did not think he took it to a level that no actor could take it. Actually, and I can't, I didn't write it down. I can't remember his name, but the actor who played the piano player, uh, Glenn, I thought actually was, Glenn Truman. Yeah, he was. Yeah, see, I excellent. I actually too. thought some of the other band yeah. members. But uh, Chadwick is who people yes, are going to think I, of now. You know, I I believe a lot of those reviews. As sad as it may see, the man died, and everyone would be scared to death to say, you know, his performance is poor, which his performance was not poor. No, but, it was a good, a very good performance. But I don't think it was. Honestly, and I don't even think it was his most outstanding performance no. he's ever done. And if you actually uh, want to go back about six months, I, I thought he was much better in Defy Bloods, also a uh, Netflix right. film yeah. with Spike Lee. So, yes. I mean, yeah. I thought that performance was better uh, than Chadwick Boseman. Definitely. And I would, if he's going to get an Academy Award, I, I think it should be for Defy Bloods. Now, also that being said, uh, the Academy Awards are going to be quite wonky this year. I don't yeah. even quite know what's eligible and not eligible. We've extended the date to like April. So there's, you know, there's no quite telling, but uh, I think the man's death is playing a role a little bit here in uh, gushing over his performance when really, if we're going to gush over performance, I thought Viola Davis, and like you said, the pianist and, uh, even uh, the guitar trombone guy, yeah. uh, uh, Coleman Domingo, right. uh, all gave better performances. Well, I, I thought, thought they all gave top performances. The thing is, this is a play. It, this is adapted from a play, and it's very obvious. And of course, August Wilson is a noted playwright. I mean, he. Oh, I, I'm you know, sure this would be a really uh, good play on the stage. Yeah, I just and that's kind of what. But he's known for um, it, kind of sharp dialogue uh, and. Um, long speeches and you know, I mean if you uh, see these movies and if you read his plays um, this this particular screen adaptation holds true to that and I think that always tends to work better on the stage than it does in a movie because you get these long sequences of talk that kind of bog down a little bit in a movie I don't know why you just kind of look for quick action more quick action in the movie maybe it's just I, you know, that's, that's what I, and I also think that that's what happens when, you know, it's great on the stage, 
it might be big on the big screen, good in the big screen, but then you're sitting and watching it on your TV or computer in your living room or whatever, and these long sequences of dialogue get bogged well, down. That's somehow. what I was going to say. I, you know, it, now, this also goes into the Netflix thing. Uh, this felt like we were watching on PBS, a, you know, British production of a theater thing. Well, I like those. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. But if I released that as a movie, it probably would not be quite as, as memorable. And I just felt like, I don't know why, it, it felt like Fences had more panache to it when I watched it and it and it had a normal film release it was not a Netflix film it came to theaters I did not watch it in theaters I actually watched it on the TV at home mm -hmm. off, I actually probably streamed it as well off Amazon so the difference I, I don't know is that much it just fences felt like a movie it felt like a play that was a movie this one just felt like a play that they were trying to hone onto the big screen. Yeah, but it does have some nice costuming. Yes. The music oh, is good. The acting is that's good. What, you can't argue The production and all that, yeah. I think they could not have done a better job. It's just, I don't know if this one translated. Well, it's just a very different play too. You have to, Fences and Ma Rainey's yes. Black Bottom are very different, though it has some of Wilson's touches in, in both of them. I do think, I did sense that it was an accurate look at the world of black musicians in the 20s and 30s. I think most of the members of these band, these musicians and the bands come from families that had their past, their near past actually, their ancestors are rooted in slavery. They were treated as second class citizens. They were enormously talented and yet taken advantage of by white producers and managers. And you know, at the end of the movie, we find out, as I said, the producer who told Le Levy his music wasn't good enough to record, then takes the same music and gives it to a white musician's band and they make money from it. They entertain in clubs, they make records uh, from his move from, I mean, it's very tragic from his music. And I think that is not, um, I, far off from uh, what existed at that time and, you know, and, and for even some time after that. I, I think, um, you know, that uh, it, it's also interesting at the end where they pay Ma and all her bar band members in cash and they insist that it be cash and not checks because when they go to the bank to try to cash a check, the bank questions them and thinks they've stolen the check and that it's not, um, you know, a, a valid uh, check. They insist on on having, uh, you know, being paid in cash and they walk away, they're done. And yet then the record sales goes out and it goes, the money from the sales goes into the record producer's pocket and these musicians, they don't uh, really get well, anything else. So, uh, you But know. that's how the music can do just worked up until well probably, that's what i'm saying i think probably the 2000s yeah well i'm saying <laughs> when well, every musician learned how to record on their own and, and release well, their all own entertainers stuff. Yes. movie stars too but um i think you know particularly for these black musicians in the 20s and 30s oh yes it, it you know they were very talented and well they, yes they basically just stole their music and, and they just lived you know day to day person. hand to foot you know and and got a little money out of it um i do think this is a much a must watch film. I think the, I think it's well made, has good direction, excellent acting, good music and costuming. And I, I really think uh, it, it's one of those from this past year that you ought to watch. It's, right. it's a good movie. Yes. So I was going to ask, so they're going to make pretty much all, all yes. at least August. Right. Wilson. Get we've, ready. We have better like two. August Wilson. Now, <laughs> um, I'm assuming most, you know, Denzel probably has, he has a deal with Netflix to do all these. Yeah. Do they at some point start to run dry for you where? You mean too much is a, not a yes. good thing? At what point? I what, don't know because. At uh, three, when they release yeah. the next one, the third one, I don't know what it's going to be, but mm -hmm. will you, I mean, we watched this one in a pretty short time that it was released. Mm -hmm. At what point do you think maybe you're tired of watching a play on the screen well, and you Pull I, off. I cannot answer that question because, as I said at the beginning, I haven't read August Wilson's plays and I don't know enough about them to know. I, I think they're probably good stories and he's I know he's a good playwright, but it just very much depends 
on, you know, if they're all very much alike, then yeah, you get tired of them. If they're different, I don't know. I, it seems like a lot to take on eight plays. I'm pretty well, sure I read it was eight yes, out of the series. The, the deal that's is a lot. <laughs> that's what, now, so, granted, yeah. that being said, uh, Tyler Perry is now a billionaire from yes. basically turning every one of his plays yeah. into a film. So, you know. But he maybe, did make entertaining films. I mean, I, I now, can't say granted, that. Granted, his is more a comedy thing. Yeah. And he had, uh, there was a, these are a little bit darker and uh, a little more gothic y. Uh, he had an audience taste. for those uh, Medea, right? Yes. Films. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So and, that man is now a billionaire. So maybe yeah. this will work. I just, yeah. These are a little more, I'd say, dark and depressing than, you know, Medea, which you just go Yeah, and, well, it's just, a, watch. you know, mindless entertainment, but funny and mindless. But these plays make you think. I don't, I don't know that they're dark. I think they're well, just family stories yes, and they tell tough It's tales. more old school drama. Let's yeah. go. It's old school drama, which, you know, doesn't actually get made all that often. Uh, and that's actually, why we all should be watching it and not just Medea movies. Technically speaking, we are doing two sort of old school uh, drama-like films today in our double feature. Yeah. But I just wonder if, um, you know, by the fourth, by the fifth one, it, it starts to become, yeah, I'll watch it. But you might watch it two years. I, I think that depends release. on the stories and who's in them and how okay. well done they are. All know? right. So what did you rate? Ma well, Rainey's? I rated it a seven. I think it's a good movie and people should watch it. Um, I don't know if it's just the play itself or the story itself, but it didn't quite have the spark I needed to make me love it. Give it a nine or a 10, like many of the reviewers are. So I gave it a seven. I gave it a four. Ooh. Um, not because it's done badly. I just, I didn't quite just didn't enjoy, like the play. I just didn't like the play all that much. I didn't find it all that enjoyable. Right. And I, I just, I don't think it made a good film. So if we're going on, did it make a good film that I would rewatch? Um, there probably is no chance I rewatch this, but I thought it was done well. And, you know, people should probably watch it and promote the arts. Right. Actual art, not uh, comic book films, though you can promote those too. We like comic book films as well. <laughs> <laughs>